Well, hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna be reacting to a video by the YouTuber Mike Thurston, how to get the best natural tan. I'm gonna be going through the video and I'm gonna be commenting on some common myths and misconceptions about tanning. If you guys are new here, welcome. My name is Andrea, I'm a board certified dermatologist and I'd love it if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the thumbs up. It really helps my videos out a lot. All right, this video has over 666,000 views. So that is a lot of eyes on this video, and I think the YouTuber has over a million subscribers. All right, guys, welcome to today's video. I'm not gonna lie, never thought I'd see the day where I'd be making a video like this, but it's been heavily requested. A lot of people are asking me how I go this color, so I'm gonna take you through some of the tips and things which I do in order to get myself nice and tanned. So we've got some leg hair removal action going on right about now. The only place in my body which I do actually have hair is my legs. I do get pretty hairy, so once every six weeks, I get rid of the hair. Once upon a time, I did shave my legs with a razor. All right, presumably he's removing the hair for two reasons. First of all, body hair does actually block some UV uh, radiation, although not enough. Um, but it's gonna do two things. Not only is it removing the the hair that absorbs some UV, but it also exfoliates the skin, which is gonna give a more level playing field for ultraviolet rays to penetrate into the skin. And presumably he wants a tan, but you guys know from my videos that those UV rays from the sun, they really do a lot of damage in the skin, including when you are getting tan. They damage the DNA in the skin cells and create all kinds of inflammation, setting the stage for skin cancers later on in life, as well as the visible signs of photoaging. But let's keep going. It was quite possibly one of the most uncomfortable things I ever experienced afterwards, particularly around the groin region. It was itching like mad. So from that point onwards, I never shaved my leg with a razor. It's always been V. So the hair removal. Uh, hair removal, uh, he's talking about he uses VEAT, which is a chemical depilatory, uh, as opposed to shaving. Uh, there's no wrong way to remove body hair, but uh, you can get ingrown hairs with shaving, as he described. Um, but chemical depilatories, they are an alternative. Basically, they just disrupt the, uh, the proteins in the hair and make the hair kind of just melt off. You do want to follow the instructions very carefully, however, as they can cause chemical burns on the skin. And he's gonna be going out in the sun. So I would caution you against using a chemical depilatory right before sun exposure because they can make your skin even more vulnerable to UV rays. But it's one of those things which I do, first of all, to get more sun to actually hit the legs. Second of all, because when you're moisturizing on a daily basis and adding sun cream, your legs just look really, really greasy and the hair just grabs onto all that grease. And thirdly, this is obviously for what I do for a living, it actually exposes all the cuts in your legs, okay? What's the point in me working so hard on my legs if you can't see them because there's just a layer of fur covering them up? So he's a bodybuilder, I take it, and you know, that makes sense to remove the body hair so that you can see more. <laughs> right, so this process is called the exfoliation process where you're gonna be removing the dead skin from your body. I did do this one to two days before you are exposing yourself to the sun. So again, exfoliating the skin, similar to shaving, it's gonna level the playing field and just allow for the UV rays to focus into the skin even more intensely, which you guys know is not a good thing, but that is what he is attempting to achieve here by exfoliating away some of the dead layer. Plus, it sounds like he's doing this the day before his last day on vacation. So he's already gotten a lot of sun exposure. And as a result of that, he's probably experiencing some desquamation of those damaged skin cells from all of that sun exposure. The skin is probably starting to peel a little bit. And so he's exfoliating away that peeling skin, which actually leaves the skin even more vulnerable. Exfoliating, exfoliating skin cells mechanically like this, it can, it can cause a lot of irritation wipe out those keratinocytes and then on that last day i'm gonna get a really good tan once again right sun cream absolutely crucial when you're going to be exposing yourself to the sun's rays the way i do it is start of the holiday i start off with a higher factor so anywhere between 20 and 30 and i apply it all over all right the spots which get me the most shoulders chest nose face particularly if you're a chest so Good that he is wearing some sunscreen. Uh, 
sounds like, and he's right, you know, some areas are obviously going to be more prone to burning, but your whole body is exposed out there, especially here in this setting on the beach. Um, starting with an SPF of 20 to 30, you guys know from my videos, unfortunately, the way people put sunscreen on, it's really hard to put enough on that you ever actually get to that SPF. So starting with an SPF of 20 or 30, it's more likely that he's getting around an SPF of, you know, at best, maybe 10. Um, and I don't know if he's only applying it to these, you know, areas that he thinks are gonna be the most vulnerable. Uh, kind of the Gwyneth Paltrow method of sunscreen application. I'm not entirely sure. Let's keep watching. Individual, you're gonna have more of your chest exposed because a lot of times sun's gonna be coming from above. So make sure you apply generously. I probably do it about once every three, four hours. Right. Well, that's good. So he indicates that he at least reapplies, which is great. Most people don't reapply and you definitely need to be reapplying sunscreen while you are outside because it rubs off. And the other reason to reapply is that, as I said, it's really hard to put enough on to begin with. So by reapplying, you actually end up getting more surface area coverage simply by the act of reapplying. Um, but one thing I wanna point out, he, he mentions that the rays come from above and you know that obviously makes sense. The sun is above you, but you also have to bear in mind that these UV rays, <clears throat> they are reflected and scattered off of surfaces like sand, for example. So it's not just what is coming from above. You have to be mindful of what is underneath you. That is why having shade plus sunscreen, that multi-pronged approach, that is why it's really ideal. Okay. First day, I don't sit in the sun for too long. I kind of just, again, gradually ease myself into it. Near the end of the holiday, I feel like I can get away with being in the sun a lot more. Usually there might be a bit of reddening occurring on the first or second day. So if you do notice any parts of your body going red, get out of the sun immediately. Okay? It doesn't mean you have to get your whole body out of the sun, but just get those areas covered up. And this is something which I'll do. About three days after sun exposure, that's really when tanning, the, the obvious manifestations of tanning are at their peak. So he um, thinks that he has kind of been building up to that, but really it's just, uh, it's a process that takes some time. Tanning is basically a marker of sun damage. Um, you know, it's considered cosmetically acceptable, it's desirable, but really it's, it's, like, it's like a bruise, honestly. And it underscores that you have below the surface of the skin, a lot of DNA damage, uh, inflammatory cytokines, and what he's describing here, the redness, that is UVB mediated erythema or redness. Basically, skin cells, they get so much DNA. See, the DNA in the skin cells absorbs those UV rays and it creates mutations. And to help you out, those skin cells basically commit suicide. It's called apoptosis. And there's a huge inflammatory response to that in an effort to clean it up. Unfortunately, the sun's rays are immunosuppressive, so it lowers the ability of your immune system to come in and correct some of that damage. Um, so that redness that he's describing, that is definitely an indication of some pretty heavy hitting uh, UV damage. He says to get out of the sun right away, but he shows himself going under that umbrella. Yes, it is a good idea to seek shade, but unfortunately, like I said earlier, getting under an umbrella when you're on the beach is not enough because the rays are gonna be uh, reflected from the sand. Uh, it looked like he was on a uh, white towel and white beach chairs. Those are gonna reflect a lot of rays too. So my recommendation, if you do begin to have redness of the skin re related to sun exposure, get out of the sun right away and don't get out, go inside. <laughs> uh, because basically your skin, it's like screaming for help and it's definitely kicking, kicking it when it's down to continue to stay out there. All right, he's reapplying here when I go somewhere sunny, I wear sun protection, all right? Even near the end of the holiday when my skin is more adapted to the sun's rays, I still wear it because even if you go brown, you're not... All right, it's good that he wears sunscreen. I hope he wears it to more than just the nose because that's really all he's ever shown. That in the chest, upper chest, is really all he's showing himself, put, where he's showing himself putting it on. But it is a, a misconception that the tan protects you from further UV damage. It, it, it doesn't. A, a suntan offers actually about an SPF of three to the skin. And the reason for that is that 
tanning is basically a form of skin injury and in response to that the skin gets thickened over time that can leave your skin looking very leathery so it's a myth actually that having a tan protects you from the sun it really doesn't i mean it offers a very low spf of three just by creating that thickening but you're still getting a lot of uv damage see it's just a myth that unfortunately a lot of people fall for that if they are not burning and they're tanning then they are they are out of harm's way and that is a big misconception when it comes to sun exposure people laying out on the beach and they get there especially people who are able to tan not everybody can get a tan like this some people will burn right away um, but many people such as this individual can in fact get a deep tan and they may think that because they can tan that they're not sustaining any skin damage but it's the opposite because they can tan and they are motivated to stay out so long they end up getting an onslaught of uv mediated dna mutations into the skin immunosuppression a huge cytokine storm not to mention upregulation of matrix metalloproteinases those are the enzymes that chew up collagen and ultimately lead to skin wrinkling um, so getting, simply being outside sunbathing and tanning, you, you are basically just exposing yourself to mega, mega doses of a carcinogen, which is UV. Burning doesn't mean you're invincible to skin damage, right? I'm very much aware of the danger of too much sunlight, okay? I'm not stupid. I do not want to get skin cancer, and I also do not want to look like a wrinkly... He's not wearing any other type of sun protection. Sunscreen is not a shield of armor whatsoever. It's not a license to be outdoors too long. In fact, that is a likely reason why in the early days when sunscreen first came out, um, people ended up staying out in the sun much too long. And as a result, later on down the road, as those people aged and got into their 40s and 50s, they started developing skin cancers and that is part of why skin cancer rates have gone up. I'm not a big believer in the oils, the factors, zeros and so on. Personally, I just think it's a bit messy. Once you apply the oil, you just cover it in oil and you look like a lubed up. Good that he doesn't use tanning oils. I've talked about this in other videos before. Um, tanning oils, uh, first of all, there's the old school practice of using baby oil or mineral oil all over. And basically that can get you a, um, a lot more sun exposure because it kind of focuses the UV rays a little bit more intensely. And uh, if you're likely to, if you're somebody who burns easily, that can fry you to a crisp. It actually can get you such an intense burn that you end up in the emergency room. But for people who tan easily, it will, again, make the tanning more intense. Uh, but the intensity, it's not, it's not a health, it's not a, it's not a beneficial thing for you or for your skin. It's basically an indicator of destruction down below whenever you have that tanning so the oils they intensify that now there's just straight up mineral oil or baby oil there's also the tanning oils that have a tiny amount of sun protection in them and a tiny amount of spf they're not really broad spectrum and what those allow for is a little bit of protection against the burning rays so that people who um, tend to burn but can tan those types of products encourage those people to stay out way too long and because they aren't burning as easily because they have that little bit of SPF on, but then they've got the oil aspect that's focusing those UVA rays. I mean, they, th those types of products really put the consumer in a position where they are getting a lot of UV exposure. But he doesn't use those good. Blamo, blamo. And we're back in England. This chapter, or this section of the video is called the aftermath. Okay, so how can you maintain the tan for as long as possible? The tan which has been achieved overseas. Now, obviously the crucial thing you need to do is moisturize. Keep yourself moisturized. You don't want your skin to go dry. So moisturizing and staying hydrated is gonna be very important. Now, I moisturize like once a day, entire body. Just use this one to be honest. It's so that is a good general skincare tip to moisturize daily. After sun exposure, your moisture barrier is impaired. You're gonna lose a lot more water out of the skin. You're gonna be more prone to dryness and irritation. Plus, after such a skin injury, the skin is going to peel, desquamate, you're gonna have a lot of shedding. And the way to baby that is to wear a moisturizer. But better than that is to not put yourself in that setting where you are exposing yourself to so much UV damage that you then have 
all of these sequela of dryness, irritation, peeling, not to mention the DNA damage and inflammatory onslaught and collagen destruction that you can't see with your eyes, but is existing and lurking down below. Anyways, oh God, oh God. Now, when it comes to sunbeds, I would be very cautious with using them. I've used them in the past. I haven't used one for about six months, but during the winter months or when I've gone through periods of times where I just simply have not been exposed to sunlight for months, I will go on them, but- Yeah, never ever get in a tanning bed. They are the equivalent of smoking cigarettes for your skin. Tanning beds use UVA. Those are the rays that just chew up your collagen and lead to wrinkling, but going in a tanning bed even one time can increase your risk for melanoma, the deadliest type of skin cancer, by 20%. Just one trip to the tanning bed. Not to mention it increases your risk of the other types of skin cancer, squamous cell carcinoma and basal cell carcinoma. In a two week period and only for eight minutes, no more than that. You have to be very, very careful with them. And especially if you have fair skin, it's probably just best that you stay away from them. Yeah, it's best that you stay away from them. And the eight minute thing, it, it doesn't matter. I mean, going in there for a few seconds is too, too much. Uh, very, very dangerous to go in a tanning bed even one time. It doesn't matter this eight minute thing. Um, and it doesn't matter your skin type either. Uh, if you are a deeper skin tone, do not go in a tanning bed because you know, those UVA rays, they're penetrating super deep. It doesn't have anything to do with your skin tone. It's still really, really harmful to your largest organ system. When it comes to tanning injections, believe it or not, I've had accusations of taking tanning injections. Do not take them. Stay far, far away from them, okay? The NHS has issued a statement. Anyone currently using melanotan should stop doing so immediately for their own safety. If the drug has not been safe. Yeah, um, he's talking about tanning injections, melanotan. Um, that, that I would definitely agree with. It doesn't sound like he's used um, these, but they are potentially very, very dangerous. Uh, melanotan is um, something that is sold like on the black market on, you know, from on the internet, you can find it, and you inject it into yourself. Basically, they mimic hormones that lead to, that bind to the melanocytes and lead to pigment production. So you get more pigmentation and you get a tan. But these um, products, they're not regulated. Uh, they're based on a medication, uh, aflamelanotide, which is regulated, but these that you can buy online without a prescription, they're not regulated. You know, these products, they are, frequently adulterated with other things that can make you very sick. And unfortunately, also, they're not very transparent with the dosing. It's been found that the concentrations, the amount of the active ingredient in these varies a lot, so you could be getting a very high amount. What are the risks of taking melanotan? Well, it can obviously make you tan. It can cause darkening and discoloration of freckles, and unfortunately, a potential risk of taking this is that it actually could uh, make you develop melanomas or just uh, worsen what's called dysplastic nevi, uh, because basically you're feeding those cells. And if you have cells in your skin that already have some of the beginning um, DNA mutations and things for forming a skin cancer, you're basically pushing the gas pedal towards skin cancer formation. Not only that though, melanotan can have some pretty serious side effects. It can make you really, really sick, really nauseous, throw up, uh, especially when you don't, you're, you don't exactly know what the dosage is. Even if they tell you what it is, the product that you bought, it doesn't necessarily mean that that is what is in there. And for men, it can cause priapism, which is a prolonged and painful erection. You typically have to go to the emergency room for, you know, seek medical attention for. It is not pleasant. And, you know, you can have erectile dysfunction as a result. So I would discourage anyone from ever obtaining these and using them. They can be very, very dangerous. Um, and they can often be adulterated with things that could harm you. So stay away from them. And then obviously genetics is gonna determine how brown you will actually go, right? Some people just aren't supposed to go brown. They just don't go brown, you know? Yeah, I mean, that's true. That's the uh, basis of the Fitzpatrick phototype uh, that you know we ask people about their tendency to burn versus tan. Uh, you know, Fitzpatrick phototype one is people by definition typically have red hair, super pale skin, light colored eyes. They will burn, they will not tan. And if you are that phototype, you are at even more risk of skin cancers. 
Um, but that doesn't mean that if you are a medium skin tone or a deeper skin tone that your skin is not going to be damaged by UV rays. Just because you tan easily, tanning, remember, it's a type of skin injury. So you don't burn as readily or even at, maybe at all. Some people don't burn. Uh, but that doesn't mean that those rays are not damaging your skin still. And I get a lot of people asking me, Mike, how on earth do you stay brown all year round? It doesn't make any sense. You're English. You live in England. How do you do it? And I tell them, well, half of the time I'm not here. After a two to three week period of being in England, I'm off. And it's usually somewhere warm because I like to be in warm places. I don't like to be cold. So I go to the sunny places. And when I'm in those sunny places, obviously I'm exposed to the sun a lot. My skin is exposed to the sun, so I'm going to be browner. And then usually when I come home, the tan will fade. But once it gets to the point of really fading, you know, I'm then again somewhere warm. So the tan is kind of being maintained all year round. You know, this year already, I've been to Dubai twice, Marrakech twice, Barcelona, Ibiza, Greece, Portugal, the list goes on. So he gets a lot of UV exposure year round. Um, and so cumulative doses of UV throughout your lifetime are ultimately what contribute to skin cancer. It's those intermittent exposures though, that intermittent intense exposures that are thought to be most harmful, but also cumulatively overall um, does make a difference. So our day-to-day -day exposures, like even if you live somewhere that's not particularly sunny, those small amounts over time do accumulate and lead to kind of your lifetime burden of damage. But then those intermittent intense exposures are really what lead to certain types of skin cancers. But it sounds like, I don't know, based on the footage that he's showing here, he spends a lot of time getting intense sun exposure as opposed to intermittent intense exposure. So even more risky and risky for not only skin cancers, but photo aging down the road. And the thing is in London, it does actually get warm every now and then it does get sunny. And because I don't have a typical nine to five job, I'm self-employed, I choose the own hours which I work. If it's sunny outside, you better believe I'm gonna be outside soaking up the sun and making the most of those rare sunny days in England. So I hope you enjoyed this video guys. Yeah, I mean, you know, just because UV rays are harmful to the skin and cause a lot of damage, as I've outlined here in terms of free radicals and DNA mutations, it doesn't mean that you cannot enjoy the outdoors. You just need to do so responsibly and make sure you wear a hat, sun protective clothing. So you definitely can enjoy the outdoors. It's healthy to do so. You know, it's good for your mood and, you know, there are other associations, positive associations with sun exposure, but that doesn't mean that you need to annihilate your skin. Uh, so protect it and still, you can you can protect your skin and still enjoy the outdoors responsibly. I sound like a, um, I sound like a whiskey commercial. Please enjoy alcohol responsibly. Um, it's nothing against this gentleman. I mean, these are common, mis you know, most people think this, um, but you are exposing your skin to a lot of damaging rays when you get this much sun exposure and you are actively seeking a tan through sun exposure. There is no such thing as a safe natural tan. He says here, how to get the best natural tan, but there's really no such thing as a safe natural tan um, from the sun. It is you know, basically when you, when you have a tan from the sun, it is an indicator of skin injury and a lot of UV damage. DNA mutations, inflammatory mediators, free radical species, matrix metalloproteinases. I mean, the list goes on and on. And um, so there's no such thing as a safe natural suntan. Um, even deadlier than a natural suntan is a tanning bed tan. So that is even worse than a sun tan, you know, from the sun. Uh, but Probably if you, if you wanna have a tan, the best thing to do is just use dihydroxyacetone, sunless tanner. Doesn't come with these risks of damaging your skin structures permanently, uh, increasing your risk of skin cancer and aging the skin. Uh, yeah, they smell funny and they can be a little irritating, but much safer way to have that tan appearance of the skin if that is what you're seeking and you know, I wish that people didn't necessarily view tanning as this health indicator because it's not, but I do appreciate that in certain things like bodybuilding, which sounds like that is what this guy does. It's, you know, part of the part, part and parcel of that um, sport to have a tan so that the muscles are, you know, more noticeable, 
um, and, and whatnot. Go in a spray tan booth, get a spray tan. Definitely safer for you. So yeah, this was kind of a fun video to do, you guys. Um, I toy with doing these here and there, you know, I'm not really one to throw people under the bus. And this video was definitely not meant to, you know, be negative against this individual, I just meant to highlight the fact that these are just common misconceptions about UV exposure and can be very damaging to get that much sun exposure. People don't realize it. So I hope this was helpful to you guys and comment below on if you enjoy this type of video. Is there another video out there that you think I should react to? Comment below if you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.